I saw in an older video about Monte Verde nibs where Brian mentioned that there is a coating on the black nibs that give them the black color. Yes. Does this hold true for all black nibs? Does this coating cause them to write a little thicker than their steel counterparts? My dad and I have both found our Lamy Dark Lilacs seem to not write as fine as our other Lamy pens of the same nib size. Okay, we've got a couple of different things to dissect out of this one. Um, let's talk about black nibs in the first place. The um, Most of the black nibs, most not all that you're going to see, are stainless steel nibs. So you're going to either see a polished steel, sort of like you have on, well, this is actually a titanium on this one. That's a bad example. Um, but, uh, wait a minute, oh gosh. Okay, so here, this one, this Pelican script here, it's a polished stainless steel. And then you have a black coated stainless steel nib on this Monteverde. Well, Monteverde or um, who else has got it? Lamy. You mentioned Lamy. So I got a dark lilac safari here. That's got a black coating as well. All of the black nibs are coatings. There's no black base metal that's used for manufacturing a nib. The closest thing you're going to get is titanium, which if you have a titanium nib, I knew there's a reason I had this. A titanium nib, which is going to be kind of a like gray color, kind of a matte gray. It's really not the same thing though. Um, so that is a little bit different, but the, the black nibs themselves are all coated on something, whether it's a gold nib, like on the Pilot, uh, Vanishing Point has black coated gold nibs, but these ones are black coated stainless steel. So it's the same stainless steel that you're getting on the polished steel but with a black coating on it. That's literally the only difference. And really, it should not write any different. Now, there's different ways to coat the nib. You can do kind of like a, I don't know exactly the process that's used for Monteverde, but you can do just more of like a coating, like a lacquering type of coating, which I think that's more in the camp of where Monteverde is. I don't know. I haven't gotten a word on that. Uh, Lamy, I'm not exactly sure what they do either, but I would not be surprised if they were more in that vein, but they might be black oxide, I'm not sure. Um, I know the Goulet black nibs and the Edisons are black oxide, which is a different process. And then you can also get what's called ruthenium, which is more like a gunmetal. That is actually a, a, uh, a base element but it's a, it's a coating on top of another thing. You don't get solid ruthenium nibs, and, and that's not a true black. That's sort of like a gunmetal color. So it's a little bit, little bit different scenario, but worth mentioning. So in terms of the black nibs themselves, they really shouldn't write any different. I think if they are, it's kind of a coincidence. And aside from that fact, you have the black coating, but really the tipping on the nib is going to be the same on all of these. No matter what color it is, or really, no matter what material the nib is made out of too, there's tipping material that's on the tip of this, except for, of course, the pen that I have in my hand right here. This is a stub nib, a stub stainless steel nib, uh, which does not have any tipping on it, so to pedal, back pedal a little bit. But the Lamy nib here, with everything except for the, the italic nibs and stub nibs, you're going to have tipping material on here, which isn't actually black coated anyway, because they hone and polish them. So if you look at the tip, it's actually a little bit shiny because you're looking strictly at the actual metal that's used on the tipping. So even though it's a black nib, the tip itself is not going to be any different than it's going to be on a polished steel. So if there is any difference, I think it's just purely coincidental. And it may be that it was just made in a different batch or something like that. You know, Lamy, especially, I mean, their quality control is pretty darn good, but especially when you get to some of their extra fine, maybe their fine nibs, there's a lot more handwork that's involved and the thinner the nib, you, the finer the nib you get, the more you can notice a tolerance in the actual, you know, tip size when you're writing with it. So you're gonna see a little more variance anyway. So I think even just the fact that you have one nib size and then another nib size of the same pen, you might see a little bit of variance from one to another. Yeah, you're, you're seeing that with your dad and that's a, that's a bit coincidental, but it's definitely not like a universal thing. Like, oh yeah, if you have a black nib, it's always gonna be fatter than your, uh, fatter writing than your, your polished steel. That's, that's really not the case. And from the way that they make these things, there's really not, uh, that's not the explanation for that if that's what's happening. So I hope that clears that up a little bit.